Hey everyone, the presentation that I have this morning is um, basically on practicing uh, law as a young Christian lawyer in Fiji. Um, I'm using a case study of my own experience when I started or was I'm working at Shekinah Law. Um, yeah, so here goes my presentation. I thought this morning that before I could go on to talk about um, my topic being practicing as a, a law as a young practitioner in Fiji, I thought I'd give all, all of you a summary basically of my presentation this morning. Um, so part of my presentation this morning is basically I'll give everyone just an overview of the basic structure of the legal system in Fiji. Um, and then I will introduce you to the Shekinah Law Team. Um, and basically, three important lessons that I've learned along the way. I've learned so many lessons along the way since coming on to Shekinah Law um, on a holistic perspective. Um, but these are the three that have stood out uh, and that I'm continually being reminded of um, every day when I go to work at Shekinah Law. Not only that, but I'm at home and doing other things. Doing the work of God, these are the three important lessons that I've learned and I thought I'd share that with you guys. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about the, the LEAD program uh, that I'm a part of and the reason I'm standing here this morning um, and then I'll conclude my presentation this morning. Uh, now before you is a basic structure of our court system in Fiji. Uh, we have basically the four tier uh, level of the court system apart from um, what we have and what we call a small claims tribunal which is basically which basically looks at civil claims uh, of up to about five thousand dollars now these are the four main structure uh, we have in the magistrate's court the high court the court of appeal and the supreme court in our highest court we don't have what you have here in australia which is the state system um, as well as the federal system uh, we just have this and this applies um, in most throughout most of Fiji um, the the high courts are usually at the at the um, we have high court at Suva in Lotoka court and in Lambasa um, we our court of appeal only sits in Suva as well as our supreme court so any court of appeal matters that comes from whichever courts um, around the country um, is usually heard in Suva, which requires lawyers to have to travel to Suva, as well as the Supreme Court. Now, our, our court structure, our court are established by our constitution. As we all know, Fiji has the youngest constitution in that of 2013. Uh, we have a similar legal system being an adversarial system like Australia. Um, in each of these courts have the powers to hear both uh, civil and criminal matters if you look at it from a wider perspective. Um, our Chief Justice again is appointed by our constitution as well as our judges and magistrate and our judiciary comes under the uh, head of the Attorney General who is also the Minister for Justice in Fiji. So this is basically our basic court structure. Um, a lot of the matters happens between the Magistrates Court and the High Court. Uh, we have also specialized courts in Fiji, for example the Family Court. Family Court um, in Suva has its own magistrates and high court, uh, as well as we have the tax courts, the employment court, um, just as some examples of the special courts that we have in Fiji. Um, is there any questions on our legal system or the basic structure of it or, or anything to do with um, the chat that's up on the whiteboard? So I take it that's a no, so we'll continue with the presentation. Now I'm going to introduce you now to Shekinah Law, the law firm that I work for. Um, Shekinah Law began its operation in April of 2009 uh, by my principal, Laurel. Laurel. Um, she's a lawyer of over 15 years of litigation. Um, the interesting, or the thing that I, I, um, uh, I think is, a, is an amazing testimony is that when Shekinah Law was established, it was established at a point for at the time in April 2009, when our constitution was being abrogated. So when everyone else, when people were um, trying to figure out, especially in the legal profession, um, because when our constitution got abrogated, the courts basically closed. There was no court sitting for a certain period of time. Um, so when it closed in April of 2009, 
God opened that avenue for Morel to establish the law firm um, and just the establishment of it. And one day when you're doing it, Laurel, um, you may want to ask it. It's a powerful testimony on its own on how Shekinah law came about. But basically, by the grace of God, um, only the family court was operating at the time. And so a lot of the matters that came to Shekinah law when it opened were that of family. Um, and, and the firm is, is, is continuing to grow. Uh, since its establishment in April of 2009. Laurel is also a graduate of Bond University. Uh, she did her Bachelor of Laws at Bond and she also did her Master's in Law Commercial Law at KUT. She practiced a bit here in Queensland before she came over to Fiji. So she's a bit familiar with, with the jurisdiction here in Queensland as well. Um, yeah, so we are a small but a growing law firm um, with about three lawyers and two support staff. Uh, we have people who've come in and have gone uh, for greener pastures um, and just amazing that God brings them to the firm at a time when they needed it the most, um, allows this opportunity for the word of God to be planted in their lives and God has just sent them out, like God sends, sends people out on, um, on the Great Commission. So we, we're blessed, we feel like um, God has blessed Shekinah Law over the years and that people have come in and they've gone out. Um, being sent out not only in terms of um, open doors in their lives in terms of work but also an opportunity to be sent out and to make a difference with the gospel or the seed that's been planted in their life um, and so we're blessed in, in that regards and that God continues to bring people at their point of need allows the word of God to be planted in their lives and for the time that they're in the office for their level in their relationship with God to also grow not only their uh, professional life but also the level of their relationship with God to grow as well. And as that happens, God starts to open doors in their life uh, where they go for greener pastures and they're just blessed. Um, and, and we thank God for Shekinah Law uh, being used not only in terms of the, the professional nature of, of the workplace, but also in terms of um, the spiritual growth um, that God has allowed uh, or the spiritual growth that happens in people's lives when they come and become part of the Shekinah Law family. Um, these are mainly our areas of practice, family law, commercial contracts, conveyancing. We are growing our commercial arm now, which, um, which we're trusting God uh, for, and, and continually God continues to show himself um, in terms of the growth of our commercial conveyancing. Uh, we do a bit of criminal defense, we do debt recovery as well, personal injury torts, employment, and, and the rest of the work as well. And God has also opened the door as well for legislative drafting and, and policy drafting. Um, and that's a blessing because this is something we've prayed about and God has opened that door. Um, so basically this is an introduction to you about what Shekinah Law is about. If you're wondering, um, this is our Shekinah Law. Well, I just got some photos. I'm not too sure whether they'll be very happy about the photos um, if they see it um, of themselves that's been put up here. But this is basically the Shekinah Law team for now. This is Laurel, um, as you can see, she's in all the photos. Uh, she's our principal, amazing woman of God. God's done so much, she's, she's got such a powerful testimony. Uh, when you do have an opportunity to listen to her testimony, um, for me personally, it encourages me uh, in my relationship with God to know that that's how much God loves a person. It's always without condition. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the team basically. So that's our office manager, her name is Monika. Um, that's the other lawyer that's doing commercial and conveyancing work, partially co uh, conveyancing with Laurel, her name is uh, Ms. Vuki. Um, and that's Tony, who's our clerk, who does a bit of litigation and mostly conveyancing. Uh, yeah, and that's me, and that's Laurel's husband. Okay, um, moving on to the next part of my presentation, which is basically the three important lessons that I've learned uh, over the years when I started at Shekinah Law in, in, towards the latter part of 2011. Um, and these are the three main things that I've learned. That our profession is a calling, pursuing excellence in our calling and the importance of growth in our, not only in our professional life, but also most importantly in our relationship with God. Now to the first aspect of the lesson that I've learned, which is our profession is a calling, I'm reminded of the word of God in Isaiah 117 that says, 
Learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Um, this is a Bible verse that a lot of people use when we talk about justice. Um, this particular Bible verse, Joshua 13, it reminds us that part of our calling is that we have to learn to do right, we have to seek justice, we have to defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, and plead the case of the widow. Of the widow, sorry. People have different interpretation of it, but that's just the importance of our calling in the profession that we're in. Um, and it's not always just about the money or about making a name for yourself. Um, that's the worldly view of it. But the biblical perspective of it is taken out of the Word of God. Um, and this is just one of the uh, few Bible scriptures uh, that talk about justice. And that's our job as lawyers. Um, we are to seek justice in everything. We have, we have to learn to do what is right. And sometimes it can be a challenge. But you know, we base our, our principles from what the Word of God says and not how the world may judge us or how the world may see us. Um, so for example, what we do um, in the office, and this is something that uh, Laurel did and, and passed it on to the team, is that, um, and we're continuously reminded as well, is when people come through the door, whether it's clients or friends who, who walk through to come and seek legal advice, and um, we have a lot of walk-in appointments that happen in the office, um, and we see there's an opportunity to be able to share to them, not only talk to them about what the law says about the issue that they may bring to the office, but also most importantly, what the word of God says about the situation. And, and sometimes we find that as we're sitting there and we're, we're giving out legal advice and we're listening to their problem, we're always asking God, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want us to share? Do you want us to share anything to this person? A word of encouragement or a word from, from the Bible or a Bible verse, whatever it is. Um, and a lot of the times we find we hear the Holy Spirit sh tell us, share this Bible verse to the person, encourage the person, tell this person this. Or at times we just hear, ah, no, you just listen to their problem, give the legal advice. They want to know what, you know. So even before they ask us, uh, from my own personal experience, I find the Holy Spirit leads me to whatever they've come to see us about. Um, and so, like we said, our profession is a calling. So it's not only about the money we earn, it's not only about how good we look in the suit or how we stand and um, um, basically uh, submit our matters or, or make our applications in court or draft a legal document, but it's also a calling in terms of um, the kingdom of God when you look at it from a wider perspective. Um, so we find that even when we're going to meetings, if we come to the meeting room and nobody's there, we just learn to pray and plead the blood of Jesus and pray blood covering over the room. Even when we go to court, we, we go early into the courtroom and there's nobody else there. Or if there, even our people are there, we just pray, we pray. Uh, we, it's not like we're standing and walking here and, and basically throwing Bible, Bible verses everywhere. But even as we sit and, and look and open our, our, our books and open the documents that we need on our table when we're about to conduct a hearing, or uh, whether it's a hearing for interim orders or final orders, or even if, if it's um, just a mention, but you know it's a very contentious matter, and the lawyer on the other side loves to jump up and, and bring up new things during the matter, we find that as when we come in and we pray about the court, or we pray about the, the judge or the magistrate, we just plead the blood of Jesus. Um, we find that when our matters get called, and we, when we're doing this and our matters get called, it's, um, it's a whole different atmosphere that has been set all together. And we find that God is always in control. Um, and so we've learned the importance of just doing that, the importance of walking into court and just praying. When we walk back past the prime minister's office, we're just praying. Uh, when we're walking on the street, um, going to coffee and doing other things, we're just praying. Praying about you know the places that we go to. Pray that God sends his angels before us so that um, always the will of God is done. Um, and that's that's something that I thank God that has been um, uh, an important lesson that I've learned is that as a lawyer in the profession that we're in, whether we're a lawyer, a support staff, a clerk, a law student, to know that our profession is a calling. Um, and people, a lot of people say that uh, being a lawyer, a law is a noble profession. Yes, it's a noble profession. Um, but the importance of what of knowing what the Bible says um, is the purpose of our calling. 
Um, and so that's another important thing, knowing that our profession is a calling and knowing the purpose for that calling. Um, and you'll only know that when you start to seek God about um, why you're working at a certain place or why you're doing certain things that you're doing in the profession that you're in. And you'll find that God will, will speak to you in his own way. So the importance of knowing that our profession is, is a calling and the importance of also knowing and seeking God about the purpose um, for your calling in that profession. Um, so that's the first and most, well, one of the important lessons that I've learned. Moving on to the second lesson, which is pursuing excellence. Um, so the Word of God in 1 Corinthians 15, um, 18 talks about the pursuit of excellence. Um, and it refers to pushing and doing the best we can with the gifts and ability that God gives us, giving our best to the glory of God. Um, but ideally, this is done without the spirit of competition or seeking to excel, simply to be better than others. Now, that's, that's the world perspective of things. I'm doing this because I'm better than that person, having that mindset. I am drafting this, or oh, that lawyer on the other side, she doesn't know anything, he doesn't know anything. Oh, she's, she just started like, she was just born yesterday. Um, and it's that spirit of competition, uh, the spirit of, of um, basically trying to be better than others. But that's not what excellence is about. Excellence is using the abilities and the gifts that God has given us and doing the best that we can. You know, the Word of God also reminds us that when we do work, we have to remind ourselves that we're not doing work unto men. We're doing it to God. We're doing it to God. So that's the, the important person to always please. Not those around you, but God. Um, and so, and that's what the word of Ecclesiastes 9.10 also reminds us of. I'm always reminded about the importance of preparation. Um, and I thank Gloria for this. She always continuously reminds me about preparing for matters, um, attending to clients' matters, ensuring that we don't miss a court date, um, ensuring that when we draft the document, when we file it, we know that we've done the best that we can in drafting and putting the client's story for that, for that particular application that we file, uh, in knowing the law, in applying the law. So the importance of things that you're taught, even from law school, and even I remember as I started in Shekinah Law, this was something that was always emphasized to me, the importance of researching before you actually start drafting a particular application or researching before, after meeting the client and knowing the type of legal issue. Or even sometimes when you get, uh, like here in, in Connie and Lynn, your appointments are done beforehand. And so you have an idea um, of, about what the client is coming to see you about. Uh, we have a few of that in Fiji where we have appointments and we're trying to make it um, that clients come in with appointments. Uh, but then we also have those that walk through the door. So we must be also be able to accommodate them um, and so we thank God that, you know, even uh, preparing ourselves and, and being able to give the correct legal advice um, and all that, that all comes under excellence. And every day that must be the standard um, that we, we, we align ourselves to is the standard of excellence because the Word of God talks about excellence. And we always have to remind ourselves that we have to uh, base our principles or base the things that uh, we compare ourselves to against the Word of God, not against the standards of this world, not, not against what someone thinks um, is the standard, but what the Word of God says about the standards. And one of those standards is excellence. And, uh, and we always have to tell ourselves, you know, especially at times when you feel like, oh, uh, I have no idea how this is done. And, and that's always been my mindset when it comes to commercial, uh, commercial matters. I've, I've never really... Um, and, and, and I continue to tell myself, I'm excellent at this, because I know I'm still learning a lot in terms of commercial law. Although it's not my preferred area of practice, um, I know that it's important that when we apply to ourselves, irrespective of the area of law it is, that we always remind ourselves that we are excellent in that particular area of law. Uh, we are excellent in the way we apply ourselves, because we are, uh, that is our standard. That is the standard of who we are as a child of God uh, in this profession that we're in. So the importance of pursuing excellence um, in all this and growth. The importance that as, as a child of God, as a child of God who is being called as a lawyer or is here as a, is in the profession as a law clerk or even as a law student who is um, endeavoring to complete their law studies, 
the importance that we are continuously growing, whether it's professionally, whether it's academically, importantly, spiritually, that we are growing from glory to glory. That's the portion. That's what the Word of God says. Um, that as children of God, we are supposed to be growing from glory to glory. So we have to grow in all aspects of our life as a Christian. And that's what the Word of God, is, Ephesians 4, 13 to 15. So whether academically, you've done your Bachelor of Law, I want to do my Master's of Law, and I want to continue to grow academically. I'll, I'll continue, I'll do research work. I'll do this so that I am growing. Just like a person who eats food because they need um, energy, they need to have brain power, brain cells, they need all these things going for them. And so for us to continue to grow, we need to be eating food from when we were young. So we need to be eating the right food, the right portion and growing uh, so we can continue to grow at a certain height. Um, that's how it should be as well in our professional life. When we come in, yes, we may struggle a bit, but it's all a growing process every day. We must apply ourselves um, and the same in terms of our spiritual life. No, where are we? We measure ourselves. Where are we right now in our relationship with God? If God is to come back today, you know, and are you ready? If you want to die today, are you ready to make it to heaven? That's the question we ask ourselves. And, and, and are we sharing about God uh, to those around us? Or are we only picky about certain people that we want to share to? You know, uh, it's always an opportunity when, when people come into our lives, we always ask God why, but there's always a reason. Uh, and so we must learn to grow. We must learn that in every aspect of our life, holistically, um, in our profession as a lawyer, a clerk, or a law, in, a law student aspiring to become a lawyer, uh, whether it's in our homes, whether it's academically, whether it's physically, I get told a lot, I'm reminded uh, by my lovely principle of the importance of, of uh, physical, physically growing as well. So uh, when I do go back, I, I probably may have that opportunity to do that. Uh, but I've been encouraged by Alistair, who's been running basically almost every day since I've been staying with him for the last two weeks, uh, about the physical aspect of things. Uh, but yes, the importance of growth. Um, and I'll just tell you a story about uh, um, an event that happened uh, a few weeks prior to, to coming here to Brisbane. Um, we had a, a client that came into the office in, um, in regards to a murder that had happened uh, at, at a particular place in Fiji. Um, and though when this client came in, he advised us that um, um, he was the main suspect, that he thinks he's the main suspect, and police may be looking for him and all this. So we gave him legal advice. Now around this time, the mother-in-law had been taken in for questioning uh, because that was the last place that these two were seen prior to the death of the friend. Um, and so the mother-in-law was taken in and was being questioned. So I was being asked, I was asked by my principal to go to this particular uh, police station and just to sit with the old lady through the process of being, of her statement being taken. So this, this police station, I this is the first time for me to actually go and, and do um, this sort of um, matter. So I went into the police station. As I walked in, I remembered the feeling was not a, um, I remember getting goosebumps. I, rem I, I remember thinking, oh, I'm in a different territory um, and that feeling. Uh, and so I was just reminding myself, I'm a child of God, you know. I rebuked, so I was just praying, praying, praying. Um, and then I came and told them that I'm here to see this person. I understand that she's been detained. Um, I'm here because I, uh, we also understand that her statement is being taken. So I, we are her lawyers and um, we want to be present when the statement is taken. So they had gone and seen the, the detective that was doing the statement. They stopped the statement. They came out, I met her, I spoke with her. She was on edge about the treatment she had received while uh, that since being arrested on that particular uh, two days before, a day before, sorry. And so um, when we went back in, we were talking, talking, having a conversation. Um, I was there until probably, because they suspended the interview, discussing with her at about four, four, five p.m. in the afternoon. I think they had an emergency meeting, the police officers. So they had um, even their big boss present. Um, and as that big boss, after the meeting, as he came down, I was having a conversation with the client over the counter. She was sitting down, just asking us, normally, how the day, how are you, and the whole works. And when I came down, um, I sensed that he didn't want me to be in the room. So when he came down, he started screaming at me, why are you talking to her? 
you and that's like okay this is i have every right i'm her lawyer um i'm not here to cause trouble i'm just having a conversation with the client and so he goes um you have never been talking to her when you want to talk to her you have to have my permission to talk to her so he was all aggressive um so i let him go on and on and on and, and that time the whole police station like came to a standstill as he was screaming and after he stopped screaming said look i'm not here to cause trouble my client has every right to have a lawyer present that's why i'm here um, and he got angry he stormed out of the room stormed out uh, literally summoned his officers outside they were told to take the client away from me and she's to wait outside until the statement is to be taken so i'm like okay holy spirit um you know i so you know my heart i don't like being in police stations but since you've brought me here i know there's a reason you brought me here so just praying in my heart about it and it was not until about quarter past six almost half past six in the evening that they started taking her statement again so i was invited to come and sit in so about 10 a good 10 minutes into the statements being taken we had the six huge c um our um, investigators just literally walk through the door and whilst the statement is being taken, this other police officer comes in and is talking on the phone. And you could hear the person on the other side literally screaming at him from the phone. And then I was like, okay, that's a bit rude because you, there's something happening here. You should go and talk outside. Uh, but then literally after he put the phone down, he told me, look, I have a directive. Um, it's either you uh, leave this room or we will throw you out. Um, and so I was like, look, I have every right. So I was defending uh, my position of being there but they literally were telling me it's either that or we the six of us will take you and throw you outside i was like look i'm under directive as well to be here um uh, but if you're going to do this to me then i want it recorded that i was thrown out of the police station whilst the statement of my client was being taken and so the lady that was doing the statement she looked at me and i said i want it recorded so it was recorded um, cut the story short i literally i went out for laurel went home i thought oh that's the end of it and then the next day it was i think a sunday <laughs> the next day i was asked to go back there so i'm like oh, okay thank you god um so i was just praying about it that morning when i woke up just praying and telling god you know this was how it was yesterday if i go in there arrest me you know all these things can happen but you know at the end of it i trust you i don't trust men i trust you and i know you look after me for me so when I walked into that place, texting Laurel every now and then, but the difference in the atmosphere I found um, that as I walked in, the reception was different than I got from the police officers. And as the day went through and they were taking her statement, they were more friendly, more open-minded about it. And even the big boss, uh, praise God, um, you know, just, just the way God did it. And as I was texting Laurel, she was telling me, encouraging me, telling me, look, I see a big angel or angel over that place. And that's why you are there. We are called to make a difference wherever we go. And just know that the presence of God is there. The presence of God is taking care of everything. Um, and so I thank God that after all, all that I went through, and even when the client was arrested and taken in and the whole statement process as well, you know, God was looking after and taking care of me. And just the difference about the importance of having the presence of God in your life wherever you go um, and so i thank god and, and and just the importance just that story aligning it that when you grow in your relationship with god wherever you go and the word of god reminds us i believe it's in isaiah where the word of god reminds us that when we find favor in god we find favor in men so you know the world standard is i must look good or i must make my friend look you know i must um look good in front of my client my reputation has to be built a certain level you know the word of god reminds us we don't have to worry about those things god takes care of that for us all we have to do is continue to align ourselves in our relationship with god when your vertical relationship i don't know someone else says when your vertical relationship is correct is right your horizontal relationship that's not an issue because god takes care of men all we have to do is continue to grow from glory to glory in terms of our relationship with God. And that means putting in time to pray, putting in time to read the word of God, putting in time to fellowship with brothers and sisters in the faith. And that's just the importance. Because when that is growing, this will continue to grow. Our relationship with men will flourish because our relationship with God is flourishing even more. Um, and so just that, just reminding us this morning afresh about the importance of growing. The word of God says from 
glory to glory that's our portion not 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 one day up one day down one day up one day down that's not god's portion that's the lies of the devil in our lives and that's the way the world measures it uh, the standards of the world and that's how people are measured in terms of the standards of the world but with god it's always growth it's always growth from glory to glory and so the importance again on emphasizing about the, our relationship with god that's the most important growth as our relationship with God grows, as we continue to find favor in God, our relationship with men, God takes care of it. Um, so you're like a sweet smelling fragrance that's walking through that door. When you walk out, people are like, wow, they want to follow that sweet smelling fragrance. Why? Because your relationship with God is flourishing. So again, just the importance of the third, and I think one of the important things I've learned is the importance of just continuing to grow. Every day we must continue to grow from glory to glory. Our faith must continue to grow. Um, and our relationship with God must continue to grow every day uh, to ensure that vertical, uh, that horizontal relationship is being taken care of. The vertical, uh, we must ensure, is growing every day. So the importance of growth um, in terms of our relationship with God. Now, for the fourth part of my presentation, which is on the uh, LEAD program, everyone knows how the uh, or people have an idea of how this program came about and it was um, through divine um, intervention um, one principal from Fiji two directors here in Australia had no idea about each other but last year they met God brought about um, opportunities to enable them to have met last year and then your directors plus Hilala came over to Fiji in January met the team at Shakaima Law uh, and, and, and as we prayed, as they prayed about it, and as the teams have prayed about it, God has opened this door uh, for the LEAD program to come about. Uh, not only focusing in terms of our professional development, but also holistically as well, and um, especially in terms of our spiritual growth as well. Um, so it's been uh, exciting for me to be one of the pioneers, uh, pioneer lawyers, or as they call it, the test bunnies, uh, for this particular program. Um, but it's been enlightening as well. I've learned so much. I've, I've had to learn to live by faith um, since I arrived into Brisbane Airport. And I can tell you, every day there's always a testimony of how God just answers prayers every day. From the smallest things to the, to the big things that I ask God, I've seen God has come through from day one up until today um, in terms of this lead program. Uh, in terms of my experience, I will have an opportunity to write my storybook about it. Uh, but so far, it's, it's been such a, professionally for me, it's been, um, uh, I've been taken out of my own comfort zone. Uh, my comfort zone has always been in terms of um, civ a bit of civil, the family law practice at home. <coughs> Since coming here, I've been exposed to school law. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And I see how very um, well structured the school system is. Yeah, in, in, in Australia, sorry, in Brisbane. And I see there's less interference uh, from the government or the ministry that's usually responsible. In Fiji, we have called them the Ministry of Education. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the schools are church-based. Um, and you see they've got structures in place to enable them to be able to uh, successfully run the schools. Um, and it's an interesting, I think it may be a growing area in law school law, um, and from the few experiences and the meetings that I've gone to with Alistair, um, just the importance of structure uh, in terms of the school system, uh, learning about that and learning about the fact that, um, that it delves into other areas of civil litigation. Uh, so that it's quite interesting just writing up letters, legal opinions, researching on the areas of school law. Um, also had an ex-family uh, law as well. Uh, being exposed to the way the family law system here works, which is similar to what we have at home, uh, but here is more detailed and more structured. Um, and so it, it has its perks and it has its cons as well. But, you know, I love the fact that um, everybody here, in terms of the family law team, they're all aware of the four-stage test. Um, we in Fiji, not, not, well, unless you practice really a lot, a lot of the times in family law, you would be aware of the four-step process. But our four-step process was introduced to us by case law, 
um, and not so much by um, the legislation like how it is here. So um, it's quite interesting uh, how very detailed the family lawyers are when you have appointments with clients, uh, you take them through the four step process and um, just explaining everything to the client, just being able to sit in meetings and to do all that and to being given an opportunity now to be able to peruse a lease. Uh, like I said, commercial is not one of my strong points, but I'm an excellent lawyer is what I tell myself when it comes to <laughs> commercial. Um, and so it's been an exciting experience professionally um, as well spiritually. Um, like I said, from day one since I got here, um, God has just been answering my prayers in, in, in so many ways, the big and the small, the professional aspect of it, the personal aspect of it, uh, and just knowing and continuing to trust God every step of the way. It was not easy for me uh, to pack my bag and to come and to leave my family, especially my little girl, but um, the experience has been worth it um, in terms of the spiritual aspect of it, the professional aspect of it, um, and it, it's an exciting program to be able to do as we trust God to open it up um, to probably other jurisdictions as well to become involved in this, um, that we will continue to encourage each other and continue to support each other on a professional level. Uh, but like I said, my storybook of the report will be coming out at the end of my experience here um, and a meet report will, uh, is due sometime this week, I think. And just to conclude in my presentation uh, this morning, uh, Proverbs 69, the word of God says, the heart of man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his path. Um, and, and that's, for me, it speaks great volumes because it was not my plan. I, I never plan, I did not plan to be here, uh, to be uh, one of the uh, first people to go through this lead exchange program. Uh, we had actually um, prayed and someone else's name was given. Um, but because the person had their own personal uh, things that they were going through, the door opened and that's how I'm here. Um, and so I thank God that although I had planned um, other things to be done in August, you know, the Word of God always reminds me and, re and, and correctly reminds me that, that though we may make our plans, it's always the, the, the Lord will establish our path. So it's the importance of always aligning whatever plans that we have uh, to what God wills for us. Because at the end of the day, it's always going to be, um, the will of God will always have to be um, to be satisfied. And so that's my conclusion to you today. That as you plan uh, things in your life, the importance of uh, entrusting it to God. Because God will then establish things for you. And when God does things in your life, well, the results is is um, is a blessing is what I will say and just being here the opportunity to be here has been a blessing you've all been so wonderful since I came in from day one you've all been very friendly all been very helpful um, and I look forward to the end of experience and other people coming to experience what I've experienced um, and so with that being said thank you for listening this morning um, unless any of you have any question uh, that's my presentation for today